Welcome to the Acronis Support Quick Tip, brought to you by the Acronis CyberFit Academy. My name is Ernie Hilborn, and I want to show you how to calculate the number of Microsoft 365 seats build when backing them up to the Acronis Cyber Cloud. And this number is the same number that's used for setting quotas. There are two billing methods which can be set per tenant or customer. One is per gigabyte and the other is per device or workload. Each tenant can only use one billing method. When using per gigabyte, you'll be billed at your normal uh, rate for cloud storage used for backing up all of the Microsoft 365 data. When using per workload, you're billed per seat, but it includes unlimited cloud storage. The only time you're billed for the cloud storage when using per workload model is for an archived email box or for users data that's been deleted from Microsoft 365, but their backup is still in the cloud. Sometimes the tenant is required to keep an ex-employee's email backups for audit reasons. Now let's switch to the console. From the tenant or customer's cyber protection console, click on the devices tab on the left side menu. Then select Microsoft 365. This is where you would normally manage backup plans for users, groups, or teams. At this point, click on the user icon at the top right part of the window and then select the Microsoft 365 Seats licensing report. This report is created as a CSV file and saved to your default uh, download location. Depending on the size of an organization, this CSV file can be very long, uh, even hundreds or thousands of lines long. So working with it in Excel is much easier. Once the CSV file has been downloaded, open Excel with a blank worksheet, click on the data menu choice and then from the Get Data section, select From Text or CSV. A pop-up menu will be displayed and ensure that the delimiter is set to semicolon, then click on Load. This will import the data with each row indicating a licensed activity used for each email address. Since the column names are generic, first copy the cells from row two over the items on row one then delete the, in the contents of row one. For this video, I will sort the email addresses and demonstrate why users have multiple items which are licensed. Brian's email address is used for rows two through four, and it's indicating that he has three uses to use a license. Uh, one is a protected team and two protected SharePoint sites, but we only count one seat per email so only one license is used. Now I will create a pivot table to make it easier to count the number of seats. Click on the menu choice, insert, then select pivot table. This brings up a selection menu and the defaults are fine for this project. So click on okay. A new worksheet is created and the pivot table menu will open up on the right. First, drag and drop the email item down to the rows area of the table then drag and drop the reasons to be licensed to the columns area. And finally drag the email item a second time to the value section. The pivot table will now have a single line for each licensed user with the number of reasons to be licensed in the various columns. Since we only license a single seat per email license or email address, you can count the number of email licenses, but if the list is long, I like to use the count a feature in Excel. Click on a cell below the column of email addresses and type in equals count a open parentheses and then block the cells with the unique email addresses and press enter. This is your number of billable seats. Label your total number of licensed seats and use it to bill your customers. You'll notice a long address starting with federated email. This entry is used by Microsoft to incorporate or federate the company's email domain into the onmicrosoft.com domain, and it is required in billable. And that's how you can validate or audit the number of billable Microsoft 365 seats when backing them up to the Acronis Cloud. I hope this quick tip has been helpful and thank you for watching.